Here we see the men climbing on a hard-packed foot trail leading to the nearby practice slopes. They carry their skis edgewise on one shoulder, running surface against running surface. Some skiers support the skis with the poles laid over the other shoulder, thus dividing the load more evenly. However, the poles carried in the free hand can also be used to good advantage for climbing. You step aside, Parker and Johnson, motions the instructor. He's going to give them rudimentary directions in the art of skiing how to stand on skis and how to grip the poles. Step first in the lower one. Place the heel spring into the groove and snap the lever. Now the upper ski. As to your poles, slip your hands properly into the leather loops so that the broad strap remains flat and untwisted around the wrist and then grip the pole firmly. Ski poles should neither be too long nor too short. In any case, they should not exceed the height of a man's armpit. Their primary purpose is to serve as a help in walking or running on level ground and for climbing. Walking on skis should be as much as possible a gliding and sliding over the snow surface. Relaxed and supple, each leg slides alternately forward, helped by the push and follow through of arm and pole. When the left ski slides forward, the right arm and pole move forward simultaneously and push through to prolong the stride. This is the two-step. First, two little running steps, and then push with the poles. One, two, push. Left leg, right leg. Notice the powerful follow-through of arms and poles. The kick turn is frequently used to change direction on flat ground and especially when climbing, to change from one direction to the other. Slide the one ski about to be lifted a few inches back. Swing it high and place the end on the snow. Take the pole out of your way and tilt the ski around. Then follow with the other ski and pole. It is advisable, unless you find yourself on an extremely steep slope, to kick turn toward the hillside, beginning the maneuver with the upper ski, the one nearest the slope. The three-step is another efficient and practical gait for cross-country running. It requires three running steps and then a push with both poles. Every single stroke begins with the alternate leg. Watch. Left, two, three, push. Right, two, three, push. It's a harmony of coordinated motion. While the legs run, both poles are swung forward. And on the three beat, they sweep through, lengthening the distance of the slide considerably. <laughs> 